You know, it, without power, it's kind of like it's kind of like sitting in a sailboat and blowing on the sails and hoping it's going to take you somewhere, right? It's like I'm just why aren't we moving? Because we don't have the power. We need we need the wind to move to to, to carry us. See, it's like we're trying to do. God's work on our own, and, it, and it's pointless. That word spirit, it's his Holy Spirit. That word spirit is the word pneuma. And, and the word pneuma is, is representative of the spirit of the living God. But you know what another uh, definition of that word pneuma is? It's, it's wind. It's breath. I mean, think about breath, the breath of God, the power of God. I, you know, right here I, I have a, a, a drill. But this is, this is not anyone, this is a pneumatic, right? Pneumatic, you know where that word pneumatic comes from? It comes from the word pneuma, which means air. It's air powered. It's powered not by electricity, but it's powered by air. And when you connect it to the power, it has the power to change things. See, it's the air that is inside of it, the wind that is inside of it. Think about a, a, a sailboat, right? You don't need a lot of wind, but that small, that gentle breeze blowing through the air, it doesn't seem very powerful, does it? But when it catches the sails of a sailboat, it can move a boat that weighs many, many tons across the ocean because of the power of the wind, the power of the air. And see, this is what God is given us, he's given us the Holy Spirit, the power so that we can accomplish great things for his kingdom, so that we can do the work that he has called us to do. He wants to fill us, he wants to empower us. See, this great commission, this work of God is not something that we can do on our own, we need some power. And the Holy Spirit is there to give you the power. What is the power for? I've heard people say, well, God has given me the power. You know, it says, well, we'll receive power, power so I can, you know, ace my test tomorrow that I didn't study for. You know, it's like we say things like that, but he says specifically you receive power so that you can be a witness. What is a witness? See, he's equipping us with gifts so that we can be a witness. You've been called to the witness stand. What is a witness stand? Uh, what, what does a witness do? He takes the stand. You don't need to convince anybody. You don't need to argue with anybody. You don't need to manipulate anybody. You don't need to pressure anybody. You don't need to twist anybody's arms. You are just a witness. And what is the purpose of a witness? A purpose of a witness is simply to state what you have seen heard and experienced. So what have you seen? What have you heard? What have you experienced? What has God done in your life? You don't need a fancy argument. You don't need to be able to, to, to convince somebody of, of creation and all the intricacies of the universe. See, that is not what God has called us to do. He says he will give us power, power to take the witness stand, to say this is what God has done for me, and maybe he can do it for you as well. In your notes, the Holy Spirit draws people to Jesus by convicting them of their sins. Convicting them of their sins. You know, you, you can't have forgiveness until there's an awareness and an acceptance that you did something wrong. Like, like we don't really like talking about stuff like this, right? Because, because we don't like to think that we ever did anything wrong. But look what it says here in John 16, 8. It says, and when he comes, this is the Holy Spirit, and when he comes... He will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Underline that. That's what the world's sin is, that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. See, the Holy Spirit is pursuing People, if you're here today, it's simply because the Holy Spirit is pursuing you. You may not even believe what I'm saying is true. You may not even believe that Jesus is the Messiah, but the Holy Spirit has been pursuing you. The Holy Spirit passionately pursues the world and tries to point them to Jesus. And so many people try to run from God. Perhaps you've tried that before. You run from God, and, and man, your little legs, they take you really far, really fast. And then you get there like, oh, oh, I ran away from God. And you look, oh, and there he is. He's right there. Because it, no matter where you go, the presence of God is always there. He's pursuing you. He's unrelenting, and he's unhurried. He's not in a rush because he's everywhere. Wherever you go, he's there. And, and so his job is to convict 
the world of sin. That word convict also means to convince, to convince the world that there's a problem, that there's sin, to point out the fault of the world, to show the world their need, their need for God, their need for Jesus Christ, our Lord. 